Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 4. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at animations and we'll also look at some C sharp coding as well. So what we want to do here is we want to make this door animate whenever we come close to it, i.e. it opens this way. So we're going to get straight into that. What we need to do firstly is create a folder down here in our project window. Right click, create folder, and we'll call it animations. Keep everything together. And what we need to do is make sure we have the door selected. Make sure it is selected here in the hierarchy or here in the scene. And we need to go to animation right here. Again, I'm sure I mentioned this in the first tutorial. If you don't have it, you can click this little menu icon here, click add tab, and then click on animation. Next thing we need to click on create. And we'll have this as door open and then click on save. So this animation is going to be relatively simple and the general idea is actually simple as well. We're doing this in 60 frames a second, i.e. samples 60, and this is the simple time frame that we're going to use. So firstly we have to click the record button to record our animation. It'll turn red, that means it's live, so everything we do needs to be set, you know, carefully. So, zero is the very first keyframe, i.e. the state it's in when it isn't being animated. So we need to set it in the position it is right now, and we need to set the keyframe rather than just assume it'll stay like this. So what we need to do is, because we're going to move it on the X axis, we need to select right here, position. We need to retype this X position, so minus 10. And you'll notice that it sets this red. This means that we have now set the keyframe. We want this door to open, let's say, over half a second. So because we're in 60 frames a second, we need to go to frame number 30. So type 30, hit enter. So by the 30th frame, we want our door to be, if we move it to about there maybe, maybe a little bit further in, to about there. So we can easily pass through the doorway. So once you've got your door open, all you need to do is press the record button once again. Now although the door will stay there, what we have done is we have created an animation state that we can call from a C-sharp script. We just need to make a couple of modifications to make sure that it does actually work. So if we go back to our project window, you'll notice in the animation folder we have two new assets. One is an animation, the one with the play button, and one is the controller. The controller is what will hold all the animations. So all we need to do is click on the door animation, so door open, and then make sure we untick loop time. That means that it will only play once when we call it. Next thing we need to do is double click this controller right here. And you can see it actually is dictated with a controller extension, so dot controller. Double click, and you'll be presented with something that looks a little bit like this. So we just need to basically add in a state that the animation won't play because by default this animation door open will play no problem. We don't really want that, we want it to only play when we say we can play it. So what we need to do is right click in this window and then click on create state and then click on empty. Now this is going to be the default state and we would need the speed of it to be zero because literally there is no animation attached to this, but we don't want anything to occur anyway, so the speed must be set to zero. Next thing, we need to right click, and we need to basically set it as default state. So set layer as default state, it will turn it orange, and that now means that as soon as the game starts at the entry point, this animation will play, but because it's not an animation, there's nothing there, nothing will happen. It will remain closed until we call this animation named door open. So speaking of which, let's create that c -sharp script to allow us to do it. So firstly, head back to scene view so we can see what we're doing. And let's go down here and let's create a new folder. So we're going to right click, create folder, and let's call this scripts. And what we'll do here is right click, create c -sharp script. And we'll have this as door open first. So, the idea of what we've done here is we've created a file which will allow us to control the world via scripting. And if we double click it, it will open up in Visual Studio. 
Now, the name of our script is important. We need to remember what we've called it because it's vital to how the coding actually works. If you change your um, script name at any point, there is one certain section within the script that you will actually need to change. And now it's loaded up, we can see we have a couple of lines already preset and it will always do this for you. These three lines at the top, these are known as the namespace. The namespace is a way of the script actually realizing what kind of code it can and can't use. A good example of that is something we're going to do pretty soon. So when we have uh, the hood on screen, the UI, we'd need to use a namespace that references UI functions. But at the moment, because we're not doing anything drastic with this, we don't need to change any of this namespace up here. Down here, this whole section is known as the class. The class is where everything within the script is stored. And you'll see here the class name is door open first, the exact same name as our script. And like I said, if you change your script name, this is where you would have to change the actual name of the class. They have to match, otherwise the script won't work. Down here, we have two things called methods. We have void start and void update. These are what contain the scripting which actually works within the game. These green lines are known as annotations. They're not lines of code. They can just be notes on the script to allow you to understand what has happened. And as you can see here, use this for initialization. That is what void start is. So this will occur once. Avoid update. This is called once per frame, as this annotation says, which basically means it runs constantly in the background. So let's start writing a script. This whole class, let's get rid of void update and void start. And you'll notice both of these are opened and closed by curly brackets. Methods always have to be opened and closed with these curly brackets. So let's delete void update so we can select from this curly bracket to here. And let's also delete void start in the same way. We can also delete these annotations because we don't actually need them. We already know what we're going to do here and those notes are kind of irrelevant at this point. They're just there as a bit of a guide. So what we need to do is we need to declare a variable. A variable is a way of the script realizing whether it's a game object, whether it's an integer, uh, a decimal number, uh, some audio. It could be virtually anything at all. That is what a variable is. It's just a way of the script realizing what it's dealing with. And to declare a variable, we need to type the word public. And the reason we type the word public is because we want to see this actual variable within the Unity engine. If we don't have the word public, it won't appear in the inspect panel. But I'll explain that as we attach the script within the game in a couple of minutes time. So the type of variable comes next. In this case, it's going to be a game object. So game object, and you'll notice the capitalization here. Capital G, capital O, and a lowercase p on public. Capitalization is vital in coding. If you don't get the capitalization right, the script won't work correctly. So it's important to get everything just right. And it's also worth noting, if you have any problems at all with these scripts, they're always available on my website. Head over there, downloads and assets, the Wolfenstein 3D clone, and you can download it there under tutorial number four. So next in the, pub, in the um, variable declaration comes the name of the variable. And we'll call this the door and then a semicolon. So most lines within coding will end with either a semicolon or an open or close curly bracket. And that basically means that this is the end of this line. So you can now move on to the next line. That's all we're telling this code right here. So remember earlier I said about methods? Well, we need to now create a method which basically opens the door for us. And the idea of what we're going to do is when we get close to that door, we need it to, to just open automatically for us. And we can do that via a trigger. So to get a trigger working correctly, we need to go void on trigger enter. So on trigger enter is the name of the method. And if we hit space now, it will automatically fill a couple of things for us. We can delete the word private because it doesn't need to be private. There's no point really. It could be a public 
method and it is without the word public so void on trigger enter uh, we can leave these in the parentheses they're not too important and all we need to do at this point is we need to say the door dot get component now remember a couple of tutorials ago i explained what a component was it is a group of items within the inspector panel and in this case, the component we need to get is known as the animator because we've just created that animation, haven't we? So in spiky brackets, we type animator and then close spiky bracket, open close bracket, which is the parentheses. And then what do we want to do with it? We want to play it. So dot play. And then in brackets and quotes, the name of that animation. So if you remember, my animation was called door open. So we need to type door open. But if you've got a long animation name or a complex animation name, quick way of getting around it. If we click on this, press F2 and then copy that name and we can paste it directly into here. Just so there's no spelling mistakes at all, because a simple spelling mistake means that the animation won't play at all. So quote and then close bracket and then semicolon so what's happening here is as soon as we enter an area which is classed as a trigger then this animation on the door will play so i'm going to save that script so hold control press s to save or file and save as you would normally do head back into unity and then down the bottom right hand on the bar you'll see a little turning thing that basically means that the script is compiling or rather unity is just compiling the script to make sure there's no errors if you do have an error within the script you will have some red writing down here and if you click on console here it will tell you where the error is within that script so how do we get that script working within this scene to get this door animating well we need to set up that trigger that we've said to set up a trigger it's very very simple we need to go to game object Go to 3D object and cube. This cube will become our trigger. So I'm just turning the camera angle around now. And the trigger is going to be just here in front of the door. So if you bring this cube to here and then make the cube stretch the length of the door so we can change on the X scale right here. So let's change it to four, maybe six, just so we get a lot of coverage and also stretch it on the X. So we'll have it two, and let's bring it to about here. So basically, whenever we get within proximity of this door, the script will allow this door to open. So you're saying, Jimmy, that's still good, but how do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. The script we've just written right here, we drag and drop this script onto this cube. And that now becomes a component. You can see here, it's now a component. And remember where we had public game object the door? Well, this is the reason why we have it public. So we can see that variable right here in the inspector panel. So now it's just a case of dragging and dropping the variable that we have as the door into this section here. So this right here, drag and drop over here, and it will appear no problem. So the final thing to do here is tick is trigger on the box collider on the cube. So that now makes this object a trigger and then untick mesh renderer. That will make the cube basically disappear. So I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit so we get a bit of clarity and we can see the entire collider all the way around. So although we can't see this object, it's still definitely there. And what happens when we tick is trigger, it means that we're able to pass through this object and when we do we've triggered something so let's press play now and check this out so the door isn't animated it looks okay it's still closed but if we get close to it there we go the door has now opened so every time we go through this trigger we'll be able to play the animation so yes that's all good and well, but there are many other things that we have to consider when dealing with uh, animations and triggers. So just to reiterate once again, let's just see how this plays. So the door opens quite quickly. Is that too fast? Is that too slow? Well, 
let's deal with the animation and let's see what we can do. So go to animations and click on door open. Make sure we have door 01 selected. Click on animation and we can see here how it reacts. So let's change this to be open over a second rather than half a second. And what we need to do is press the record button once again and you can either take this keyframe here and drag it along as you can see drag it along the timeline or you could manually change it going the frames up here. If it's just a quick change it's probably best just to kind of do this because it's not a problem at all doing it this way. Just dragging the frame you can see there we go. So that's round about a whole second now. Perfect. And then press the record button once again to stop that animation and make sure it's saved. So let's go back to project. Let's press play and let's see the door open a little bit more slowly. There we go. So that is how we can deal with animation, how we can get C sharp to actually enable things to occur within our world. So next tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to do the inverse of that so we're going to have the door closing we're also going to expand that c sharp to have some sound effects when it opens and we're also going to deal with coroutines within coding basically to allow, us, allow ourselves to close that door after a set period of time so guys until that next tutorial don't forget to subscribe click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on this channel. And with that, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.